Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Won't you turn to somebody and say, It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, your watchful care, for your provision and your protection. And we thank you, Lord, for the anointing in this service in Jesus' name. That, that anointing that breaks and destroys yokes of bondages and sets us free that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you our lives and give you our praise and give you our worship today in Jesus' name. And everybody said... We just want to welcome everyone this morning, Christmas Eve morning. And uh, to those that are watching online, we also want to welcome you, and we pray that you will feel the presence of the Lord this morning. This is our The Season, The Reason, Part 2. <laughs> and we told you that last week. And uh, so we have lots of special music this morning and uh, a message from Pastor. And uh, to uh, make sure you have a candle and holder. Uh, Don was passing them out there at the information desk. If you don't have one, make sure you get one before the end of the service. And uh, we're going to be lighting the candles at the very end. All right. Uh, Gaylene is going to come, and she's going to read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. And all went to be packed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went in from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house of David, to be taxed with Mary, his, his spouse, wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she would be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the there was no room for them in the end. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were so, so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, behold, I bring you good news, good tidings, and great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto this born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be signed unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, good will towards them. And it came to pass and the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which came to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known of what the say which was told them, certainly this child 
and they had, and all they that heard of wondering at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Thank you, Gillian. <clears throat> We'd now like to welcome Stephen Lee. He's going to come and play a piano solo, Carol of the Bells, and then Taya Chambers will be singing a song for us, O Holy Night.
Thank you very much. That was beautiful. We're going to invite the congregation to stand now. We're going to sing some carols. And uh, we'll be accompanied by Joan on the piano. And Joanne Boudreau is going to play her flute.
seated. Pastor Ron's going to come now and trumpet. A couple songs on the trumpet. I'm just going to warn you, I haven't done this in a while, but uh, I want to play it as a, well, Israel was 400 years before Christ came. He was, there was 400 years of no word, no word from God, no prophetic word. So if you can imagine as I was playing through this, and I'll sing some of the words for you. It was, to me, it's like a lament. And they're going through a, a time, a very difficult time, and then, of course, you know, the, the Romans had uh, come in and uh, messed up their system, their worship system and everything else. So I, I'm going to play this uh, slowly, not because I can't play faster, but just because, to me, it's like a lament a lamenting song, and then we're going to end up with Emmanuel, which means God with us.
and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thy advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight oh come desire of nations bind all people in one heart and mind bid envy strife and quarrel cease fill the whole world with heaven's peace <laughs>
you, Lord. We adore him. Do you adore him? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Praise you. Just a couple of announcements before Pastor comes with the message this morning. Um, there are now tithing boxes at the back. Please make sure you pick yours up for uh, 2024. And uh, if you would like to give your final donation uh, for the year, uh, you can give it today, or you can e-transfer up until far at Friday at 4 p.m., uh, so either way, and if you need more details on how to do that, please see Joanne um, after service, and you can get some information on that. So next Sunday, even though it's December 31st, uh, we can't accept donations for this year on December 31st. Um, I left all my notes down there, and I was trying not to go down there. <laughs> Newcomers, yes. Please pick up the uh, January calendar. Uh, make sure you know, uh, see what's coming up in January. No. And uh, we have something special coming up January the 7th, uh, the first Sunday in 2024, and we're calling it uh, the Newcomers. Uh, luncheon. And if you have been, are brand new to Bethel, 
I would say in the last year, in 2023 or even before that, and you're a newcomer to Bethel and you maybe have some questions that we have never answered in service or, um, and you have questions about membership, you have questions about the PAOC, you have members, just questions about anything concerning Bethel, we'd like to invite you to come to that luncheon. And you can meet Pastor Ron and I, and you can ask questions, and, and we'll try and be- answer that to the best of our ability. But that's something that we're going to do about every three or four months, because we have new people coming all the time, and we want to be able to meet you and uh, answer your questions. So keep that in mind. It's on the calendar. And uh, then uh, that's jumping ahead, because next Sunday is New Year's Eve. And we will have a 10.30 a.m. service, but we're also having fellowship at 7 o'clock. So come, we're going to have games and bring food, and we'll just enjoy a time of fellowship together. Uh, And we can do that. That's next Sunday, 10.30 and 7 p.m. And if I forgot anything else, I'll just tell you next week. Okay? Lord bless you. Pastor Ron's coming. Praise the Lord. Oh, God is so good. I feel like I got this stand set for short people. <laughs> Don't be sorry. God loves short people too. <laughs> well, what a wonderful time of the year. What a wonderful season. God is so good. In Matthew chapter 2, I'm just going to jump right in. In Matthew chapter 2, Jesus was born, verse 1 and 2, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, about that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it arose, and we have come to worship him. In this passage, it says some wise men. It doesn't say three. We assume there's three because three gifts, but it just says some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem. And what were they doing? They were asking. Everyone should be asking during this season, What about this Jesus that this Christmas is all about? These wise men were asking, where is, where is, where is this Jesus? Or where is this baby that Christmas, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it arose and we have come to worship him. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? They were on a search and so all of us should be on a search. Not just for Christ, but for his presence that we can engage in. These guys, they followed a light. And they still had to ask, where? We do not know very much about these wise men. But what we do know is that Herod inquired from these wise guys where to find the newborn baby and instructed them that they come back and tell him of the baby's whereabouts and gave them gave them the impression that he had a desire to go as well to worship him also. But it was pure deceit because he, was, he really sought to uh, take the baby and kill the baby. He felt that this baby, this baby posed a threat to him and his power. So listen to me for a moment. Not everyone who asks you about Jesus do so because they really want to find him or desire to worship Jesus. Some people wish to kill your faith in him by feeding you lies. And if they succeed in their attempt, it will only cause you to stop calling on the name of the Lord and become dis- discouraged. It's a snare. Not everybody that says, tell me. Jesus said in Matthew 24, talking about these days we're in, You will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. How many want to sign up? You'll be hated over all the... You'll be hated 
all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and they will deceive many. Sin will be rampant in every, everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end shall be saved. Jesus said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, are necessarily seekers. But these wise guys, these wise men, they had the seeker's heart. These guys are often, you know, well, we don't get much about about these guys at all. We don't find out about their status in society. And what's puzzling to me is that these wise guys didn't have a Bible to inform them about the baby. They had no map. They had no Google Maps. They had no cell phones or instructions of any kind other than a light. Here in this passage in Matthew chapter 2, we find these wise men, not foolish men, they followed after a star at night, which they believed would lead them to the Messiah. These wise men were obedient and followed a star in the sky. They searched for a king they had never seen to worship him. And they were so sure they would find him because by faith, as simple as it was, they had gifts to offer him. They were on a mission to find him and to give him their gifts. And they were obviously obedient when God told them not to go back to Herod, but to go another way. Listen, God is speaking by his spirit right now. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone, Matthew 7, verse 8 says, for everyone, say that word with me, for everyone, everyone. Turn your neighbor, say that means you. And it also means me. Everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, find. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. I remember when a family said, uh, the Bible doesn't say we should celebrate Jesus' birth. Well, it's interesting because those wise men, well, they looked for Jesus and it was about the time of his birth, though probably around two years later, they found the Yeshua in a house. Yes, Almighty God had a plan. Almighty God had a plan. And provided a way for wise men to seek the Lord that they might walk in his ways. They were not with the shepherds. They were not with the shepherds on that day. But they came to worship him. They came to worship him. Galatians 4, 4 and 5 says, when the right time came, when was the right time? Well, it was certainly not. It was certainly not when the, when the shepherds were there. They were in a house. But at the right time, God sent his son. God 
God sent his son. Excuse me for a moment. Hello? Hello? Oh, Nathan! Oh! Hello? Hello? Nathan? You, you know what? I'm preaching right now. I got a crowd right in front of me here. And, well, I normally don't answer my phone, but... I'm glad, you, I'm glad you called. I've been trying to get a hold of you. Yes, how's things going there? Oh, you just got your power back. Oh, good. Well, I, I've got, uh, I've got uh, uh, something for you to do. Yes, I got something for you to do. It, it doesn't matter when you go. I just want you to go. And, and, well, as far as the cost is, don't worry about it. I just want you to go to Israel. And if you don't mind, you can stop at Bethlehem. And yes, you can stop at Bethlehem. Now, you can go there right now if, if you can. But, but I got to tell you, you can't take your brother with you, and you can't take your wife with you, and you can't take your sons with you. You have to go alone. And the cost, well, it, it'll cost you all right. So, well, I appreciate you calling, but I want you to go right away. If you don't mind, and, and thank you for your call because it's necessary. I, I, even Well, I'll just give the folks a, a Merry Christmas for you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now, the Bible says, what happened? There, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5, and when the right time came, God sent his son. And by the way, I have two sons. My oldest son is about six foot eight, and, and he's quite a strapping lad. There isn't too many that would ta tackle him. But he's not my only son. I have two sons. Both of my sons are, are married, and I've got four grandchildren. But I got to tell you, this says God sent his son, and it was his only son. He didn't have any others at this point. As a matter of fact, when God sent his son, it was going to cost his son. It was going to cost his son his life. John 3, God so loved his only son. John 3, 17, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But if anyone who does not believe in him has already, has already been judged for, for not believing in God's one and only son. The judgment is based on the fact that God's, that God's light Everyone say light. God's light came into the world. My son is not my light. I'd have a hard time giving up my son for you. Like I said, I have two. God had one. But those who came to the light, verse 21 says. Oh, let me back up a little bit. God's light came into the world. But people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate light and refuse to go near to it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right... Come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. 
James 1, 17 says, Whatsoever is good and perfect comes down to us from God. The Father, who created all lights in the heavens, He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. And the one that He sent is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he was, he is, and always will be. Now the reason for the season, for this season, is Jesus came to bring the world light. You ask, well, pastor, how bright is the light? Well, Revelation 21 gives us a clue. By the way, I am so happy for those that put all these decorations together with all the lights and things. We light our candles. We'll light our candles later, but we light candles in our homes. We light our Christmas trees. We put them lights on the houses. But listen to how bright this light is. Revelation chapter 21 verse 22 says we get a glimpse of the, of the future. I saw, John says, I saw no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city. And the Lamb is its light. The nations will walk in its light. And the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of the day because there is no night there. And all the nations will bring their glory and honor to the city. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter. Nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's a bright light. That word describes a pretty bright light. You see in John chapter 1 verse 5 to 7, this is the message we heard from Jesus. And now we, it, we declare the same message. God is light. And there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but going on, go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living, boy, this is big news, because this light is pretty powerful. If we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from some sin. What was that? He cleanses us from all sin. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. If you don't mind, I'll just shout a little bit because I thank God that he cleanses from all of our sin. It's no longer just about following the light. Those wise men, they followed the light. But it's no longer about following the light. It's about having the light in us, living in us, and shining out of us. Jesus said, John 12, verse 35, My light will shine for you just a little longer. Walk in the light while you, have, while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become, what? Children of the light. Psalm 89, 15 says, Happy are those who hear the joyful call to worship, for they will walk in the light of your presence. Lord. Psalm 56, 13, For you have 
You have rescued me from death. You have kept my feet from slipping. So now I can walk in your presence, O oh God, in your life-giving light. Praise the Lord. Now Ephesians 5, 9 and 10. For this light, for this light within you produces. Thank you, Jesus. This isn't just so we can say, oh, I'm a Christian. Glory to God. I go to church. Oh, yes, I do. Thank you, thank you, I go to church. This light produces. This is life giving light. Hallelujah. This light produces only what is good and right and true. And the apostle says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. So what does this light within us look like? Psalm 112, verse 4. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, they are compassionate, and they are righteous. Say it with me. They are generous, they are compassionate, they are righteous. Now by faith you look at the other person you say, that's that's talking about you. So just like our God and Savior lights shines in the darkness, you do too. This means when you celebrate Yeshua or Jesus, He is in our lives every day because you have light within you. And there isn't no amount of money or friends that, that can give it to us. I've got something that the world can't give and the world can't take it away. I've got something that the world can't give and it keeps me day by day. I don't know where that come from. <laughs> I've got something we're talking about. It makes me sing and it makes me shout. I've got something that the world can't give and the world can't take it away. Whew. Jesus said in Matthew 5, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So you won't desire to get the praise and the glory for the light that's shining in you. You'll just turn it right back to the Father. You'll give glory to Him. So, uh, David said in Psalm 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and He's my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? So the big question here is this morning, is the Lord your light? If you have this light of God, then this light of God shines in you to shine through you. And you no longer have to be afraid of anything because we serve a God who is light, who takes care of his own. He provides for what you need. Maybe not the way you want or how you want it. Or when you want it, but the Lord provides. He, his light enlightens your understanding so that you can see the right path to walk. John 9, 5 says, but while I am here in the world, I am the light. In Matthew 5, we, we've already read it. You are the light of the world. If you know Jesus, 
You don't have to just put up lights at Christmas time. You can be the light of the world. The one who is the reason for the season is the light that is shining. And if you're here and you don't know the true light of the world who is Jesus, or you have never received him as Lord and Savior, you have no light to guide you through this, the, the dark times of this world. Wise men followed a light. A light that led them to where Jesus was. God sent the light so that they would find Christ. God has sent the light for you to receive, to follow, and to be His light in this dark world we live in. So let us walk in the light as He is the light. Father, right now, I thank you for your word. May your word stick. May your word stick. May your word stick, in Jesus' name. May your word stick in us. Let me sing this song. Could we just invite uh, the people with the lighters? They're going to come to the front. If everyone would stand. And uh, they will light the person on the end of each pew, and you just pass the light to the next person beside you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that in Jesus' name, I pray for those that are watching online and maybe in this house and they don't know you as their light, as their light. I ask that the light of your countenance would come upon them. You would open their eyes so that they will see you. You would open their ears, they will hear you. And you'll soften their hearts so they will receive your light, your love, your light. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for all your kindness, your, your goodness.